And this is Weapon Weapons. Let's talk a second about the CIA thing because this is hilarious. And I want to tell the audience about my favorite UFO documentary of all time, the only UFO documentary completely funded and produced by the CIA. It was narrated by Rod Serling, who is the, the, the voice of the Twilight Zone. I mean, just the greatest ever. And it was in response to a previous uh, documentary where they were kind of uh, pushing down the UFO topic, being negative, trying to dismiss people. This documentary is called UFOs, Past, Present, and Future. And it is an excellent documentary, narrated by Rod Sterling, that, that I actually have a link for. I'll we'll post it for people. It is so cool. It's like an apology video, right? A couple other things, though, is that I've talked to people who have flown these planes out of Area 51 in these secret programs, and I know for sure that the first testing of these planes that were supposed to be the highest ever, the highest flying planes ever at the time, that they had objects, UFOs, unknowns above them when they did their first test flights. So somebody's got a tech that is better than ours. Now, the first time you put me in, Coach, I can't believe you trusted me. Oh, my God. <laughs> my beard was probably way too long for the insanity going on in my brain. But you had me out. You, you had me out. Sorry. I came out with my camera first row at the Atomic Testing Museum. And you were interviewing on stage uh, the chief scientist for the CIA out at Area 51 and the, the head historian for the CIA out at Area 51. And they were just going to talk about Area 51. So here comes the bearded guy always holding the camera. And you didn't really know if I was a loose cannon yet. Now you know I'm a loose cannon. Yeah, so it's I, it's confirmed. Yeah. Confirmed. <laughs> so, uh, so I was sitting there thinking, oh man, please raise my hand. Will George call on me? I got a question to ask. And I think I asked him like three questions and it was very specific. Are you aware as the lead historian, Robarge is his last yeah. name. Are you aware as the lead historian that uh, the CIA funded and produced a document documentary called UFOs Past, Present, and Future. And he was like, I don't have knowledge of that. But then I asked him about Site 4. And man, it was, I think it was genuinely like they weren't, maybe they didn't know, but it, it looked shady. They were like whispering back and forth. <laughs> and like, so it was just cool to be able to ask them specifically. And they, they couldn't confirm they had no specific knowledge, but that was so funny because I couldn't believe you called on me. Thank you for that. Thank you. And, and, and being able to ask them directly, that was a big moment for me to be able to film that, just sitting there with a the camera. So my name is George Knapp. I'm a journalist at KLAS. Uh, unlike this, these guys here, my connection to the topic of Area 51 is a little more tenuous. Uh, I have never been inside the place. I will never be allowed to get inside the place. Uh, but I'll tell you, I've been writing about it since 1985. Uh, I've spent, I haven't been inside but I've spent more days and nights outside peering in than you can ever, you can imagine, trying to dodge security and coyotes and whatever else is out there. And, uh, you know, when I die, I'm sure that this will be, somehow Area 51 will be part of my uh, obituary, along with tales of various debauchery and other things like that. Um, this is a, a panel of extraordinary people united by their interest in and involvement with a most extraordinary place, as we all know, a place that you know, it's sort of a contradiction in terms. That is the world's best known secret military base. Um, kind of the rock star of the off the grid testing facilities. It's a place with no name and a place with a whole lot of names. You know, uh, Paradise Ranch, The Box, uh, Watertown, Area 51, Dreamland, or the current official name, very catchy in my opinion, an operating location near Groom Lake. Put, put that on a bumper sticker or a t-shirt. Area 51, as we all know, has been shrouded in secrecy. Uh, some would argue too much secrecy. And the cone of silence that was sort of dropped over the base, at least for a while, has been a contributing factor to all kinds of wild stories that have cropped up, most of which I have reported at one time or another. Uh, so tonight, we'll talk about secrecy a little bit, how and why secrets are kept, about some of the steps that are taken to ensure that secrets were and still are being kept. And we'll talk about uh, the steps that have been taken to lift the veil, to allow the public to finally know what really went on out there.
we did not talk about a lot of things that went on during that period. But during that period, the technology advanced in Spain, in aeronautics, electronics, stealth, and so on, was the most advanced R&D effort the world saw. I really appreciate you guys coming forward and talking about all this. It's fascinating. So as one of the highest ranking CIA officials out at Area 51 during a very exciting time, it sounds like, um, are you aware of a facility or facilities on or near Nellis Range designated S4 past, present, or future? I should probably say that one. I'm sorry, I'm not aware of that. Not aware of a facility called S4. Okay. You ever heard of an S4 at Tonopah? There is a site for a Tonopah test range, which, by the way, Tonopah test range is listed in some of the Department of Energy phone books as Area 52. So that that would explain the the public acknowledgement from uh, information officer in 1989 when a well-known journalist called and asked about a facility called S4. They were probably referring to the one in Tonopah. Most likely, yes. And are there multiple or single S4s that any of you are aware of? We had a site for that where we parked our Soviet radar. Thank you very much. Fascinating. So the last question is for Dr. Robard. Um, just a personal curiosity. I get to ask the you know weird questions. So as the chief historian for the CIA, are you aware of in 1971 the Department of Defense asked for, produced, and publicly funded a feature film titled UFOs, Past, Present, and Future, uh, where it was admitted on camera by high-ranking officials in the military that UFOs, as far as they could tell, were of non-terrestrial origin. Are you aware of that film and the funding of it by the Department of Defense in 1971? No, I'm afraid not. It's, uh, it would have no CIA equity in it. So um, the CIA is no longer uh, studying the UFO phenomenon, or they are? They're not officially right now studying the, the UFO phenomenon. Thank you. Anything else? Anything else for our panel? I mean, secrets can be kept, right? We hear this. Washington leaks like a sieve. There's no such thing as a secret. Secrets can be kept. Can't, can't confirm or deny that we keep any secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, panel. Thank you very much. Okay, everybody on three, say CIA, one.